Hey, Foot Clan, before we jump into today's show, we're going to take a look back at preseason week two. One, remind you about ultimatedraftkit.com. This is where you find our Ultimate Draft Kit. It's got everything that you need to be ready for those fantasy drafts. And those fantasy drafts, they are coming up, so you better make sure that you are prepared. Over 100 video profiles are projections for every offensive player of note. Matt Harmon from NFL.com, his reception perception, our sleepers, our breakouts, our busts. Oh my, the tears. I mean, I'm telling you that this thing is absolutely jam-packed and it has everything that you need to be ready for a fantasy draft. So head over today to ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from the Play Draft Studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, uh, it's Monday. Whew. This August, is the week. August 21st. Uh, I spent some time beyond the wall <laughs> this weekend, and I have come down with a cold. Yeah. So bear with me. If you need to bear tag Bear with you. Oh, I see what you did. If you need to tag me in at any moment. You just, you just you put the hand up, all right. WWF style, right. and I will get in there. Mike is used to he's getting in, getting yeah. used to this hosting gig over on on the DFS pod. Doing a mighty fine job over yes, there. Yes, you Mike. are, Mike. All right, welcome to the show. We've got a great one. We're going to go through the preseason week two highlights and kind of let you know what uh, what players we're buying into because of the performances. What players maybe you don't need to buy into, despite good stat lines. Right, we watch for different things. Sometimes in the preseason, you see much more opportunity, obviously, for certain players than you'll ever see during the regular season. We'll try to wade through some of that with you. We've also got our Raising Canes Rising Stars of the Week. We each picked out a player that we think is rising, and we want to make you aware of heading into your drafts and into the upcoming season. So very excited about that. Don't forget you can win a David Johnson autographed helmet over at footclangiveaway.com. That giveaway, uh, you can enter it right up until the beginning of the season, and then we're going to go ahead and give that baby away. So don't miss out on your chance there. And follow us on Twitter, at the FF Ballers. Um, we are always sharing new articles, new information, new things going on, so don't miss out over there. All right, guys, we're going to start with the Rising Stars. Raising Canes, Rising Stars of the Week. All right, some interesting names on today's Rising Stars segment. Mike, why don't you kick it off with uh, a player I'm buying into as well? Sure. I'm going to kick it off because I'm kind of known as the the pessimistic one when it comes towards this offense. So I want to show it some love, show that I'm not just a cruel, hardened man. Yeah. When it comes to the Los Angeles Rams, Cooper Cup looked great. He looked like a perfect fit for the scheme. We've talked about him on the show that that he has a great opportunity for a rookie wide receiver and he fits – that West Coast, that get the ball out, quit the dink and dunk, and you saw Jared Goff dinking and dunking and actually look like a competent quarterback that if they can keep this style going, then maybe Jared Goff won't be a, a complete disaster this year. And a big reason for that was Cooper Cup. He had the the big play, of course. It was, it was a broken defensive play, but scored a nice touchdown, got wide open, showed solid route running, good hands. He's going to be a PPR value late in your draft if if you're looking for a wide receiver that's just going to get, you know, how many targets you feel a game? Like, yeah, how many how many targets a game you feel like Cooper Cup can get to? Like I think he's going to be a three or four reception guy a game. Yeah, it, which, which is a lot. I mean, that, that's for late something. in drafts, I mean that's 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 a nice value a guy that you know you can slot in as a PPR three. Yeah. So long as Jared Goff can uh, move the offense like he did this last week, then you know that that's the thing is okay. He gets three or four receptions right. a week. How valuable are right. those receptions able to be coming from Goff? But he looked pretty good, right? Right. I, I honestly, I I think the Los Angeles Rams looked better <laughs> this week than they have looked in at least two years. Like I haven't seen yeah, one game. That's a fair point. Where it was like, wow, there there they are. Uh, I'll I'll hop in my. Uh, my rising star is a guy that I brought up several months ago. Uh, a lot of people hadn't heard of him then, and I I had heard so much about this D'Angelo Henderson character. 
character. And, you know, everything from rookie camp to, uh, you know, early training camp was just so glowing on this guy. You might want to throw a team in there now. The others might not have heard of him either. <laughs> sure. The running back, what would you say, like four? Running back four coming into the season. Rookie Maybe running back four. Number one in your heart. For he the, might be the two. The Denver Broncos. And, and what I loved about him then was you've got Devontae Booker who – does not appear to be a very well, efficient running back. You don't know and yet. And he's hurt. And he's, he's hurt. hurt. He's going to miss time. C.J. Anderson, who is uh, usually hurt, and Jamal Charles, who was hurt uh, several years ago when last he played football. <clears throat> and so the situation was good. I watched some college film on him because the hype train was rolling, and I said, eh, I was not impressed. I am officially retracting <laughs> that unimpressed college film because what he has done for the first two weeks of preseason is when you watch the film you could see someone who looks different there was a play that was called back on a holding that did not affect yeah. anything for him which was this awesome touchdown reception where he just he was hopping and scooching and just making guys miss he looked just like on that play Deion Lewis a couple years ago where we called him you know butter he was like hot warm butter yeah that D'Angelo Henderson has really impressed me. I think he's got an opportunity there too with with the other backs to to emerge. Do you think that D'Angelo Henderson is going to make Jamal Charles expendable? Yeah, he, yeah, he probably does. Yeah, and Charles hasn't seen the field, so could be a problem. I mean, could could quickly go the way of Arian Foster last year with Jamal Charles, where he's gone. So I'm going to go with Rex Burkhead. I'm going to go with Rex <laughs> yeah, Burkhead yeah. of the New England Patriots. Rex Goathead. You know what I, I saw? Right? Uh, oh, gosh, no. No, you're not right. But, uh, look, Rex Burkhead got the opportunity to start. Gillisley is still missing time. It's going to become a real problem for Gillisley if he misses another week of preseason play. And this is not, this is not uh, exalting Burkhead to a high draft pick, but right now he's basically a 13th-round pick. He's going around Joe Williams, and I, I want Rex Burkhead more than I want Joe Williams. He showed a, uh, a capability in the passing He's game. Good. He basically ran the, the Deion Lewis uh, quick route across the middle of the field, took it in for a touchdown. He looked good. He looked solid, and he was somebody, again, just like Gillisley, handpicked by Belichick, one of many. It's not a nice situation there when you have to pick. You know, Deion Lewis came in with the second team. You have James White. But I like Rex Burkhead as a later round. Take a shot on him. If something, if something's not right with Gillisley for a long period of time, there will be plenty of snaps for Rex Burkhead in this offense. Yeah, and he showed that he was capable with them. They were really wanting to see what they had out of him because it seemed like you know they were rushing, rushing, rushing with Rex Burkhead. And then every time they went to pass, it was like, oh, there's Rex Burkhead. I felt like he was the Patriots' first team offense. And while he won't be that in the regular season, it's nice to see that he is fully capable. I, I, I agree. My notes on him were just plus, 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 plus. That's good, right? Yeah, those yeah. were good, not minus. Over the offseason, I mean, when the, the signing happened, I was really excited for the potential Burkhead. The Gillisley signing obviously threw cold water on that, and you could see that in the average draft position where Gillisley is a fourth, fifth-round pick, and Burkhead's kind of the forgotten man. I still think that over the course of the season, Gillisley projects as the the touchdown guy. He will get more snaps than Burkhead. But Burkhead, is, he's a solid player, and he can be very efficient. So those were the Raising Canes rising stars of the week. Remember, game day tastes oh so much better with Raising Canes tailgates full of fresh 24-hour marinated hand-battered chicken fingers and fresh brewed sweet tea. Visit RaisingCanes.com to find your nearest location. News and notes from around the league. All right. Anquan Bolden has decided to retire after, oh, less than two weeks with the Bills. Good for you, Bolden. That's what I say. Yeah? Yeah, because, no, when he signed a contract with the Bills, the Bills were trying to win. And he said, okay, well, I can, be the, I can be the final piece here of this receiving core. And then the Bills are like, eh. Hey, we're not really trying. We're out of here. We'll, we'll, we'll play for 2018. They sent away Sammy Watkins. They sent away Darby, their best cornerback. Who looked great in preseason. Yeah. So if you're, an, not for if you're Anquan Bolden, you're going to put your body through another year in the NFL just for a team that has zero chance? 
No, thank you. It does so, bump up Zay Jones. Obviously. Charles Clay. Yep, Charles yeah. Clay has been uh, a Andre guy Holmes. You see, I never forget Andre Holmes is six four. Well, that <laughs> look, Andre Holmes. He may be the outside receiver there. You just have to pay attention to that. You see Matt Harmon talking about yep. sleeper potential of Andre Holmes. But if I wanted, if I had to own anybody in that the passing offense, it would be Zay Jones. This has to move Tyrod Taylor down, though, because yeah, yes, his, yes. his weapons to pass to are, you know, I mean, his best weapon is currently not healthy right now in Jordan Matthews. And I think the, the confidence that He did that return the, to individual practices. Yeah, barely. He's jogging and saying that when he moves <laughs> his arms, saying. his whole body hurts. That's <laughs> literally what he said. So, um, yeah, the, the thing is, is um, – I don't believe that Tyrod Taylor has the starting position locked down for 16 games. That's my worry with him. Yeah, it seems like it. All right, uh, Jordan Reed, activated off of the PUP. He's got those orthodontists in his (laughs) shoes. He's ready ready to go. And now he has miniature actual dentists in his shoes. Is that what you're saying? (laughs) Yes. His uh, his toes are all braced (laughs) up, and they're ready to go. They're going to be so straight. It's great to have him back. I th- I think Kirk Cousins needs him back. Watching the Washington offense, yeah, we'll looked, get to it in a little bit. Yeah. They looked putrid. They did not look, you know, average to me. They looked out of sync and awful. But Jordan Reed was missing. Jordan Reed being back will be helpful. The question is, <clears throat> how often will he be missing? TJ Yeldon, hamstring injury in the first quarter, didn't return. Dewan Harris was signed by the Jaguars. Mm. So, hmm. uh, just a depth play there. I mean, you already have Yeldon, Ivory, Fournette. Uh, Thomas Rawls was sidelined with the ankle injury, did not play in preseason week two. That's bad news. Uh, That's w- bad news, man. That means why that, is that bad news? Cause just because of the, in his injury history. Sure. With Do you know if it's the same ankle? It is said a minor ankle ailment. Mm-hmm. I'm, it's not good news. It doesn't give us any more clarity, but it might not mean much to Thomas Rawls' you know, uh, time on the field. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lacey started in his place. <laughs> Chris Carson shared first team reps with Lacey and gained 27 yards on six carries. We'll talk about that later. And uh, some rumors coming out that Garrett Blunt might not be a lock for the final roster in that Philly. Is bananas. How about you stop running him on stretch plays just to see? Why don't we see what he has? Let's see if Garrett Blunt can outrun these guys, huh? Yeah, the answer is no. <laughs> don't don't put them. Don't we try playing? to plow them over. Just you don't want to have a race <laughs> where you can tilt you're the betting field. on Garrett Blunt. So so if. This somehow happens, and they decide weeks before the season they're bailing on their starting running back. Is there anyone from Philadelphia's backfield that you have real interest in, or just I would I would still personally put my interest in Denell Pumphrey because I believe he's a good player. Uh, we haven't seen him, you know, but he's not going to take first that or second role. down. Right, exactly. Rep. We haven't like, seen him taking that role. But I mean, if there's no other running back there. Uh, that, that's well, just like bad for the entire Clement? offense. I mean, yeah, he's the guy Corey that. Clement? Yeah, he's the guy that's been getting some runs. So keep him on your radar at least for preseason week three. I think he'll be an important watch. You know, you you want to you want to see what Clement does. I expect Legarrette Blunt will be there. I don't think they can lose him right now. Clement's five ten to twenty. Five ten to twenty. That's that's beefy enough. That's a thick boy. Yeah. Yes. 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 Man. So okay. That's like um, that's like me. <laughs> right? We're, yeah, we're you're, brothers. You're basically the we're same basically person. We're basically the same guy. Built the same <laughs> way. Weekly Rewind. All right, we're going to walk through the preseason games, our takeaways, things that you guys like, didn't like. Let's start in the uh, Thursday night matchups. We had Baltimore and Miami. Baltimore won that game going away. What did you see out of that matchup? And we've talked a little bit about it already. Yeah, it's, it's the the highlight for here is Devontae Parker getting those those smoke and Jake Cuddy locked on targets. It's good to see a Jai in the game to know he's you know fully back, cleared from everything, and able to go. Uh, once again, I want to remind everybody how bad Damian Williams is as a <laughs> running back. He was horrific. Um, and the only the only other note that I have from that game is. Baltimore is going to be a huge catastrophe if Joe Flacco is not there. Their quarterback situation is a problem, and, I mean, they, they expect Flacco to be back by week one. Great, dandy. But if he's not there week one, that's – that's. I mean, you, you're, you're not – I wouldn't start a single Baltimore Raven, and I would play the defense against them. If you want to welcome yourself to my dynasty situation, I have <laughs> Andrew Luck on my bench. So I you, you have Joe Flacco on my bench. 
and I had to sign Tom Savage this morning as an emergency week one play. So there's a chance I don't have a starting quarterback at all in week one if things don't go the right way. Let's oh, man. Uh, uh, I'm Danny so Woodhead. Sorry. Danny I'm Woodhead so was on the field. It was nice to see him on the field and playing. Um, we kind of talked through these Thursday games, so I'll go through them quick. But Buffalo, Philly, the Philly offense didn't look very good. Legarrette Blount looked terrible. Uh, the offensive line struggled a little bit. Lane Johnson at left tackle struggled, and Tyrod Taylor looked terrible. Just want to talk real quick because <laughs> I've seen some some concerns bubbling on Twitter of people having some now concerns in LaShawn McCoy with the the team bailing. Now you have Bolden off the offense. You have you have very unproven pass catchers. Tyrod Taylor may get benched. Uh, there's also like these weird rumors of them actually trading LaShawn McCoy. Do you have any hesitance going into your draft of taking him in that three to six range? You have to have some hesitation because if they're not in the red zone, if they're not in a position to score frequently, you've got a problem. And if, if Tyra can't move the offense, if, you know, somehow a, a, a controversy at the quarterback position happens three, four weeks into the year, which is very possible. It's going to. Because – Tyrod is not the future. This this franchise has already decided that. Now, I'm not saying he can't be. He shouldn't be, but he isn't. They have really tried to make sure he is not the future of this franchise. So, yes, they have. So, essentially, you've got the potential of a rookie or a young, uh, a different quarterback back there. That doesn't help LaShawn McCoy. None of that helps. Trading your best wide receiver doesn't help LaShawn McCoy. Putting your offense in a position where uh, maybe you're playing catch-up more often because your defense has been – uh, damaged. Uh, look, it's it's not good. Now he's on the field and he catches passes, so the opportunity is there. But yeah, I think you could have your your chances of having three or four dud games with Lashawn McCoy goes up. Yeah, I, I would I would agree with every single thing you said. It doesn't necessarily move him down my running back ranks, but there are so many questions of, you know, okay, I'm I'm at that three spot or that four spot or that five spot. Do I take Lashawn McCoy? Ahead of Antonio Brown, that's what I Odell mean. Beckham, and Julio, and I think this says no. You, you need. If I'm there, at least I'm taking the big three wide receivers over Shady because even in a standard, yeah, even in a standard. All right, all, all right. right. So, uh, do we other news that I have uh, from that game, real quick. We barely mentioned it, but I, I have a note here. Charles Clay looked so necessary to that team. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I mean that. I mean, necessary. it was like necessary. Is it necessary? <laughs> uh, the the uh, the reality though is that Tyrod Taylor looked for him often. Um, if if Jordan Matthews isn't there with Anquan Bolden gone, Zay Jones is a rookie. I believe Charles Clay is going to be very involved. If his knees can can uh, withstand victory this year, <laughs> then I would say Charles Clay has a chance to be a low end tight end one this year. All right, the last Thursday game was Tampa and Jacksonville. We talked about the Yeldon injury. Uh, had a chance to see Deshaun Jackson on the field. Mike Evans is a monster. Um, really feel like his floor is, is super high, even though he may not deserve to be in that upper echelon in my book. Um, maybe he does. I mean, he, he's just a monster, and when you're that big, you've seen this with Brandon Marshall. Like, the targets, they don't change. Like, you don't – even if you're double – it's not like he wasn't double covered at times last year. The targets are always going to be there. That's the most trusted weapon on that offense by Jameis Winston. And so you have a very – and he can make plays. He, he wins the 50-50 ball. So uh, very safe at the position. Anything from that game you want to mention before we go into the games we have not talked about yet? Yeah, I'm good. That, that offense looked really good as a whole for Tampa Bay. And I was very – I mean, I guess it goes hand in hand, but I was very disappointed with the, you know, the vaunted – Jaguar defense that is coming in this yeah. year, they looked like they are not that special so far. And I, as the poo pooer on the team, or, or Doug Martin looked great. So yeah, I, he, he, he looked fantastic. Mike, are you buying into Doug Martin? I I am not buying into him at his draft price, but if you are, I'm I'm not likely to draft Doug Martin. But if you're getting into that six <laughs> seven round uh, round range, then. And you want and you want to hold him for those three weeks. He he looks like he did two look years. good. He looked I've like seen, the good version of Doug Martin. Yes, I've seen a lot. Yeah, he had burst for sure. Yeah, he was impressive to me. Yeah, Cutter still came out and said, "Hey, there's no way I'm going to guarantee you he's the starter in week four. Um, it just seems like him. 
Dirk Cutter being yeah, it be, you coaching. Know, yeah, and so, yeah, last thing you want to do is tell Jaquiz he can't win the job. Right. I mean, and not get performances from it. The one thing I'll say is when I – a lot of people have drafted. They're sending us pictures of their draft. They've sent us a lot of uh, their rosters. Every time I see Doug Martin as some of the depth on the bench when your running back core isn't as strong as it could be, maybe you went wide receiver first, maybe you jumped on Gronkowski or Reed, it makes me happy. I think you put yourself in a good position if you can survive those first few weeks. If you've got Doug Martin on your bench, I'm a big fan. Before we move on to the next game, I want to thank today's sponsor. You know who they are, Foot Clan. Pristine, Pristine auction. auction. <laughs> the, be- the best sports memorabilia site in existence. Look, this is the place where you get your guaranteed authentic signatures from your favorite sports stars. And they have far more than just sports. I mean, movie posters, movie props, musician signed items. And they got everything. Uh, they got all range of things from from the uh, just the low casual collector to if you're a big baller. Because I'm, what I'm looking <laughs> at right now is a Tom Brady signed Patriots. So he signed it, Tom Brady, five-time champ. And it's an electric guitar. And it is all Patriots out. And it looks incredible. If this thing was on your wall, then people know that you're big balling and you're a big Tom Brady fan. But like I said, all of our jerseys, we get them from uh, uh, Pristine Auction. That's P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. You can make a completely free account. When you do that, let them know that the fantasy footballers have sent you. Yeah, and we also want to thank ZipRecruiter. A lot of uh, people out there know that I, you know, I used to run a business uh, with these two guys and hiring was the most important part of that job to make sure that the business was succeeding. It, One so would a, say you you still run a business. <laughs> well, yes, but uh, you know the question is: Are you hiring? And if so, do you know where to find the best candidates? It, finding the the talent can be really tough. So, thankfully, with ZipRecruiter, you know you post it once, and it goes to a hundred plus job sites with one click. And you know that their technology basically matches the right people for you. And that's that's what makes ZipRecruiter a little bit different. Unlike other job sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you; it finds them for you. So in fact, it says over 80% of jobs posted on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate in just 24 hours. That is, I could tell you as a previous person that has done hundreds of interviews, that is awesome. So there's no juggling emails or calls to your office. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. And right now, our listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. It's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. One more time, try it for free. Go to ZipRecruiters.com slash footballers. All right, let's talk about the Vikings and the Seahawks. Now, Russell Wilson, super impressive in this game. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson did everything he could do. I was once again impressed but hesitant with Kassam Williams. Uh, some big plays. If you look back at week one, I mean, I think he's a sleeper candidate that people are going, okay, the stat lines are there. What is this guy doing? Now he's running with the, the starters. I think he's worth a dynasty pickup. Uh, I may or may not have done that myself over the weekend. He basically ran the same route four times in week one. <laughs> it literally was, and they were all the same pass you know, from Boykin. It was basically... Run straight and catch the giant jump ball. Yeah, it was, it was down the left sideline. Uh, impressive catches, but if you don't have a refined route tree and you're sitting there at best fourth in this rotation, maybe you're ahead of Jermaine Curse, but you're not ahead of Lockett, you're not ahead of Baldwin, you're not ahead of Richardson, and you're not ahead of Graham in the pass-catching pecking order. So a fifth receiving option... Uh, maybe a six behind pro size. That doesn't make me excited. So I would say that's one of those situations where you need to ignore the stat line and look at opportunity and say, look, it's just not there. He may be very talented, but you're going to need injury to find him snaps. I agree. A great dynasty stash. I will say, I mean, you want to talk about passing the eyeball test. I wrote down on my notes. I was like, look into number 18. Like who is number 18? I was, you know, and that's Kassan Williams. He, he really did look special, but I agree. He's He's not going to get in. So for your redraft leagues, someone to keep you know on the radar, but not not drafting him right now. The guy that impressed me the most, easily Doug Baldwin. I mean, Ooh, we we threw a little bit nasty. of yeah, we threw a little bit of shade, or I did, you know, just on Doug Baldwin's historical consistency when it comes to fantasy football. Uh, always finishing well at the end of the year, but most of that production coming in a very few games. 
holy moly, did he look good. I mean, yeah. one of his routes where he was he faked outside, goes inside, and it looked like his hip should have came out of the socket the way he stopped and came back to the ball. Uh, I've always been a huge Doug Baldwin fan, and he looked great. Russell Wilson looked great. The Seattle offense – I think they're, you know, I think they are ready to rebound from last year. Takeaways from the Minnesota side. Yeah, Stephon well, Diggs looked good. Dalvin yes. Cook was very involved. I wanted to talk about Dalvin Cook. Why don't you? He he looks fantastic. He is absolutely passing the eyeball test. He's passing the test of he's getting opportunity. Latavius Murray is back though. Latavius Murray has been activated. Uh, do you have any concerns with Dalvin Cook? doing all this work between the 20s and getting you some points and then when it comes time for the big payoff they go okay put the big dude in I have as much concern about that as I do Jonathan Stewart and Christian McCaffrey it's the same situation to me Jonathan Stewart Latavius Murray they're going to get work they're going to get some rotational work and they'll probably uh, but I'm saying touch they'll probably that's score the big thing. no they'll probably score but uh, what you need is Dalvin Cook to be involved in that passing game the way he's been right. involved. And I, so, yeah, he, I have a note down that says Cook will catch 50 passes. That's what I wrote down watching fair. this game. I think I think Dalvin Cook will catch 50 passes and if he does, it's it's going to be very difficult for him to not be fantasy relevant this year. And then if they're using him in the running game, anything like what they're doing now. And I I do Mike expect him to be taken out on most goal line situations and Latavius Murray to be in, but what Dalvin Cook has shown so far is that he might be able to score from outside the 10. Uh, uh, you know, enough times to make him fantasy relevant in PPR leagues if he – Well, he better. I mean, 50. people are taking Dalvin Cook in like the third and the fourth round. They're I, taking him as a as a running back one. Yeah, this I, offense is going to move the ball. I think that will I, – I think he's more of a, a running back two, but I actually – you know, the third and fourth round, that's usually going to be an RB two. I don't blame people for taking him there. I'm, I'm going to be – Are you comfortable with I that? I am comfortable okay. with that right now. He's He's shown everything that he showed in college – and, you know, their, their offensive coordinator now is, is usually focused on a feature back. And Sam Bradford has been, you know, notorious for checking down. Just look at last year, what the running backs combined to produce as, as receivers. I, I think Cook is starting to become safe in my eyes. All right, let's talk about the Panthers and the Titans. McCaffrey was in consideration for my rising star of the week. <sighs> He's, he is. He uh, just has a lot of burst. He's the real deal. If the question you brought it up of, of Jonathan Stewart, how much time does Stewart eat into McCaffrey? How much time does McCaffrey get to play as an actual wide receiver? Because is, is it a situation where he's still going to be on the field, just in a different position with the possibility of, of getting some more targets? Because McCaffrey, like Cook, he's being taken in that rounds where you're saying, he's my two, and he's going to be starting for me essentially every single week. Well, so, you, you, you know my feelings on this offense and my belief yes. that they're going to bounce back. So I, I do feel comfortable if McCaffrey was my number two, even with the rotation. I think the big playability of McCaffrey is going to be the thing that sets him apart. He may not have the snap counts you want to see from a two or from a bona fide you know, number one caliber guy, but you're not going to see those snap counts from a guy like Danny Woodhead either. He's going to catch the ball, and McCaffrey's going to be able to make some big plays. In the running game, in the passing game, I was very impressed with him. I was equally unimpressed with Derrick Henry on the other side. 16 for 36 with a long of 17, so, which yeah. was a 17-yard touchdown. Which he looked means good that on that touchdown, he I did. will say. But that means he was 15 for 19 for .78 yards per carry in the preseason against uh, vanilla defenses. It wasn't impressive. Jason, you were, no, I, I gave you a ride into work today because your battery was dead. Yeah. So was Derrick Henry's. I, I'm telling you, man. I, I had just given him, I had just given him, mad respect as saying, you know, I think he's a legitimate top ten running back, real running back in the NFL. Jogging that's, back. That's, that's what, what I've I, seen. But I, I told you on the drive in. I mean, it looked like he every handoff he got was it came right after he had just finished running a mile. <laughs> he finished running a mile, and then they gave him a handoff. He just looked tired and gassed every single play. Now, yeah, he had two touchdowns, and he would have been fine fantasy. Uh, what that showed me was DeMarco Murray, with this <laughs> offense, with this offensive line, with the touchdown opportunities that are going to be there, and DeMarco Murray's a much better pass-catching back. Yeah. He's I, I, I really like DeMar DeMarco Murray. Tomorrow, tomorrow, guys, is our My Guys show and DeMarco Murray was almost one of my my guys. Um, when 
all the DeMarco Murray owners, they were sweating when you were talking about Der Derrick Henry last week. And this was the kind of performance that really, with DeMarco not playing and with Henry not producing at some otherworldly level, it was a kind of one, you know. It, yeah, I'm just trying sweat, to crush DeMarco sweat. Murray's, you know, average draft price so I can get him in more drafts. Well done. <laughs> oh, the, before we move on from Mariotta the Titans, looked good too, by the way. Yes, he did. Want to bring up. Uh, Mariotta. <laughs> Want to bring up Delaney Walker, who at the time of our tight end show was not in our uh, our tight end one area. But and I we think, got a lot of heat for that. I think he has, I think he's moved in there because we agreed, you know, maybe he's a little bit too low. But are you are you in on Walker? Do you are you trying to draft him? I mean, because that's he's going in that middle round range where he always goes. No, I'm not. I don't want him. I agree. I've been saying that for months, and people are like, "Well, look, this guy. He always does this and that." No, he he doesn't. He had a one outlier season, and then he always catches around sixty balls, fifty balls. Uh, I I don't want him because he's not. He doesn't represent the upside I want at the tight end position if I'm if I'm drafting somebody that late. Yeah, and, and I'd rather have Ebron. That and early, then, you mean? Huh? How early is he going? Well, he, I mean, he's mid round. He's a seventh round pick. I would assume. Oh, yeah, gosh. he is. He'll he's, never. He's be in on the team. seventh round, and that is the problem. Will Delaney Walker finish the year as a tight end one? I think he's got a great chance to finish the year as a tight end one. He'll probably be, you know, the 8th, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th tight end. But that is usually, I mean, you know, Richard Rodgers was a tight end one. That that didn't mean anything for fantasy right. because you you couldn't you couldn't really rely on him. And yeah, if you're if you're giving up a 7th round pick, go look at the running backs and wide receivers that are available in the 7th round. Or the I mean even though you're, you're you're sacrificing something important to take Delaney Walker whereas you can take Rudolph, Henry, Ertz, all going after Walker. Exactly. Doyle, Ebron, just guys that I'd rather take the shot on. So, personally. Jason, with with your uh, uh, temperament of Derrick Henry's play, do you still buy into him as that potential RB one? If, yeah. If he's given the starting uh, job, I, I absolutely still do. Okay. I, I I realize he looked a little sluggish, but he is a freak athlete, and you saw. I mean, with this offense. Even when he was looking poor, he scored two touchdowns. I mean, you yep. know, if for fantasy, he's going to be fine. If if DeMarco Murray goes down, Derrick Henry is going to be a great fantasy option. And uh, let me just throw this out. I said this before the show. If you're in a dynasty league, make sure you have Jonu Smith rostered in that league. I really think he will be the heir apparent to Delaney Walker. He's cheap. He's free. He looked great, uh, I thought, in that game. And so if you're, if you're in a need for future tight end um, – Take a look in a book. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and talk about this chiefs Bengals game. A lot of exciting stuff happening in that matchup. Uh, a lot of it had to do with, look, Pat Mahomes is in a wonderful one. I want, I want to just talk about Pat Mahomes for a second. Okay. Pat Mahomes is in a dream situation. He is, uh, he's with the Walrus. He's with uh, the, one of the best quarterback gurus. And Andy Reid, in a team that can have some success, that's built the right way, coached well. He impressed the heck out of me. Don't freak out in fantasy about Pat Mahomes. This is not going to be I, – I think that he could end up taking snaps by the end of this year. I said the same thing about, you know, Ware and Alex Smith. If they get off to a bad start, you may see some snaps from Mahomes. But it'll be a while. It'll be a long time. I think Alex Smith showed uh, – that he's willing to take a couple shots down so the field. What is what does a bad Alex Smith game look like, though? I think the Alex difference. Smith looks great. I think the difference between a bad Alex Smith game and a good Alex Smith game is really not that. It's about twenty yards. It's called victory. It's, it's not a big. It's difference. just the victory. It's, it's the, the win. Team. Yeah, it's the win. I mean, Alex Smith never played bad to lose his job to Kaepernick. Right. He just he, just he didn't was actually play great. He was actually winning, but he didn't do things that. You know, Andy Reid has been known to do. And Andy Reid's been a field stretcher. Andy Reid's been a guy that wants to be aggressive in that passing game within the context of the West Coast offense. Take a few shots. I I think Pat Mahomes is going to be incredible from an arm strength standpoint. But he's going to make mistakes. He's going to do some of the things that don't help that defense. So I don't think you're going to see him right away. I was super impressed. I thought I saw Brett Favre on the field again. That time when he shook out and rolled to the right and laser beamed yeah. that ball. You can... Alex Smith can be more Not aggressive. Not many guys can do that. No. Alex Smith can be all the more aggressive in the world. He can't he can't fit it into that window. He can't make that throw. That throw is a one in a million throw. So 
Um, Let's talk about Spencer Ware. Let's talk about some more fantasy relevant and situations. Kar- and Kareem Hunt, because I think you and I, Andy, yeah, we, we totally about disagreed this. We on this. Completely disagree on this. So you guys can listen and be the judge. The way that I saw Uh-oh. the game, do we need to go to the court? <laughs> don't, don't, don't. I don't think we have enough uh, don't, don't, formulated don't, don't, arguments don't. for the court. Don't, 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 don't. All right. All right. Um, so here's <laughs> Andy's reached for a button. Um, I don't know if this is actually happening or not. So I will just continue on and say, Spencer Ware, I, wa- I watched this game, and Spencer Ware gets first carry, and they said they want to see what they can get out of Kareem Hunt with the first-team offense, give him some opportunity. <clears throat> so Spencer Ware, first carry, three yards. They give him a pat on the butt, and they say, go go rest. You're You're done for the day. This is not a bad thing. If this happened with any other starter that you know is locked and loaded for that role – Water off your back. You don't care at all. You know, I mean, David Johnson played one series that was three. He got three carries on the first series, and he was done. And you, nobody's like, whoa, Chris Johnson, you're going to – no, of course well, not. Well, because the, the Arizona Cardinals did not trade so, up no, in the third round. Yeah, we're, for, they're, not, they're not wanting to take a look at Chris, at, at Chris Johnson to right. see what they have for starting potential. And they, and they are with Kareem Hunt. I get that. And Hunt looked great. So, he looked you know, that, great. He, he, he was very involved. I think it was great. But my point in all this was I think people are overreacting to Kareem Hunt and Spencer Ware in the wrong direction. It said to me that the Kansas City Chiefs know what they have in in Ware, and he is their starter, and he will be their starter, and they wanted to see what they get in Kareem Hunt. So Spencer Ware's draft stock because of last game, it's going to continue to go down, and I think his role as the starting running back for a good offense is safe. So I really like Spencer Ware right now because he's going to be available in the fourth or fifth round. Well, this is going to be one of those times, listeners, that you're just going to have to decide what to believe. And that's, I mean, on this show, we're just trying to give you the information so you can make those decisions. I do not read it the way Jason does. I, I know that Andy Reid came out. He said he wanted to see him. He wanted to see him against a good defense. He wanted to see him uh, the, where the speed of the game was what he would expect if he's a starter. And so I think his production in that situation showed he can be a starter and can step into that role. So it doesn't help Spencer Ware. He's not Spencer Ware's not Lev Bell, David Johnson. He's not LaShawn McCoy. Uh, I think he is the starter. So I, I will agree with that. I think Spencer Ware is the starter. But um, Kareem Hunt coming in, playing against the first team defense, and producing only helps Kareem Hunt. I, I agree with that. I, I lean on the side that Spencer Ware is the starter and will be the starter for we all agree on that one. for for quite some time. So I think that he is at, he's worth his draft price because I don't I, I think it's Ware's job for at least the majority of the season. Now the nice thing is I mean Kareem Hunt Kareem Hunt's going to be a top three round draft pick next year the way I project it. So if you're we've gotten a lot of questions for people saying hey. We get to keep rookies for yeah. their ADP. Should I reach on anybody? Wait on Cream Hunt and maybe reach on him a little yeah, bit. Yeah, eighth round pick. If yeah. you end up having to trade an eighth for Cream Hunt next year, that's going to be beautiful. That's yeah. a great point, Mike. Um, real quick, Joe Mixon didn't talk a lot about him last week. He was very impressive last week. This week, six for 16. Jeremy Hill, Jeremy six Hill. for 28. Jeremy Hill has looked. Still have Geo in that backfield. Jeremy Hill has looked good yeah, that's, for two weeks. And I know that's a crazy thing to say, people. I totally understand. But he looked patient, he looked strong, and he looked like an adequate running back. And this wasn't a situation where the Bengals said, okay, Jeremy Hill, take your turn. Okay, you're done. Joe Mixon, you take your turn. They kept swapping him in and out. I think that's what you're going to see. So, I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. That, that could be trouble for the fantasy value of Joe Mixon, assuming that everyone in that backfield stays healthy because pe- well, people are paying – all these rookies – are getting paid up for Mixon, yeah, McCaffrey, they are. Cook. Hill's and a tenth rounder. That's what I was just gonna say. Yeah, Jeremy Hill in the tenth round. Yes, please. He's worth taking. I All mean, right, you're you're drafting him next to a guy like Matt Forte, who's on a team without an offense. What do we think about Marlon Mack? The Colts, the the Cowboys. Marlon Mack five five carries, forty five yards. Also had two receptions. He had a spring in his step. Yeah, he's and, got that, juice. Uh, Frank Gore does not have. Uh, he also looked capable enough to go between the tackles yeah. a little bit more than I think I expected to see. Moncrief didn't play with the shoulder injury. Anything on the Colts side? What do you think about the Mac situation before we talk Cowboys? Uh, I think Mac he looked 
I th- he looked great. I liked Matt coming into the draft process, but I still believe that if something happened to Frank Gore, Robert Turbin will be the biggest beneficiary of it. They're just they, I, I believe they will go with the security. As if Marlon Mack is not a handcuff. Right. right. I, if, if you're handcuffing Gore, if you're betting against Gore, it's still Turbin for me. All right, Darren McFadden. Also, the passing game for the Colts, if Andrew Luck, it's like just you like were saying Ravens. about Joe Flacco, if Andrew Luck is missing time, no, it's not good. It, it's well, I'm saying like Hilton. What do you do with T. Y. Hilton? Last week, I moved, uh, I moved Hilton, Moncrief down, both of them, along with Andrew Luck a little bit. Brady overtook him in my rankings. Just hedging a little bit against a one or two game uh, problem for Andrew Luck. We don't know. I still think he'll probably be ready. Might not be. That's, if he's not ready, the Los Angeles Rams are the are one of the those late round uh, defenses to grab. They they play the Colts in Week One. Oh, that is a great point. McFadden nine carries, fifty nine yards. McFadden, if, if also you're, a terrible fumble. <laughs> yeah, but it's still if you are the if you're drafting Zeke and you're trying to get the Cowboys going to play, it's going to be Darren McFadden. He's going to get all of the important work. Alfred Morris nine for forty nine. Rod Smith seven for fifty three. In other words. It don't matter what your name is. Yeah. You're going to run behind that line. But it's going to be Darren McFadden as the starting running back. And also out there, uh, fantasy players, please, please continue to doubt Des Bryant and Dak Prescott. Go ahead, because I'm going to scoop them up everywhere. Des Bryant is a monster. Dak Prescott is freaking good. His, you don't say. His one incomplete pass was a bat down. We might talk about him tomorrow. Oh, good. I really hope we do, because I'm <laughs> – I am tired of the people, Jason, <laughs> Des Bryant's schedule, all oh, the corn. Stop it. Des Bryant is an elite wide receiver, and he will be drafted Listen. like that by me. <laughs> In all leagues. J- yes. Mike is coming into your league, and he's drafting these two players. <laughs> Just for that one Just for, pick. I'm going to walk the door in. Down. Give me Des. Um, Where are you drafting? The 205? <laughs> yeah, I'll take that pick. Here's the thing with Dak Prescott. <laughs> Dak Prescott comes at a discount. A Dak discount. And, I, and look, I know it's the Colts defense, so. Yeah. Yeah, I have a note here that just it's, also says it's the Colts D looks I, uh, real, real bad. I get it. But Dak has similar uh, late round adjustment because of the lack of multiple years of doing it. And we saw this with Russell Wilson. So if he, you know, if he's the next Russell Wilson, and I don't mean that in style, I mean that in, in fantasy pattern where he comes out and he's going to be a top 10 every year. We're going to learn that. We don't know it yet. That's why he's just a 10th saying, round I'm pick. all in, baby. I know you are. I know All that. in, as he be, should be. He's a, he's a good player. I can't argue with you there. All right. Ah, the New York football Jets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. They are a hot mess. I mean, I, it's just unbelievable. I, I literally wrote down – I'm sorry, but I have to. Did you draw the whelp face? I Yeah, the whelp face. <laughs> no. Um, I My note is Hackenberg is so entertaining. If he was the starting quarterback, I would watch every single Jets game the, as long as he can stay in it, which who knows how many quarters that would be. He is horrifically bad. He has no business being on an NFL field. My biggest takeaway was that you should draft the Bills because they play against the Jets in week one. Now, granted, in week one, it will be Josh McCown. They can't possibly put Hackenberg out there. Oh, they can but do it. Oh, if they do, if they do, take the, the Bills at one on one. Just, just draft. I'm him trying in. to find the. Uh, you the, saw his coach came out and said it was the offensive line. It was the offensive line. Well, that the problem him. is the offensive line is still there. The uh, the tweet of the weekend goes to Justin Rogers, who tweeted out and he said Hackenberg said he thought the Lions did a great <laughs> job studying the tape. Stafford said the team barely watched tape at all prepping for this game. So Hackenberg's over here is trying to do the deflection. He's going. Yeah, block, block, block. They were, they were good. They were prepared for me. And <laughs> Chad, no. Chad Hansen. Everyone's prepared for you, Hackenberg. <laughs> They're born prepared. Yeah. Chad Hansen led the Jets with wideout snaps on Saturday. Mm. Good luck figuring that situation out. But Blau, I, I was very happy to see Blau Plow play. Yes. Because I was starting. My concern was growing with all this time he's missing with his injury. But he got out there. Uh, Powell should still be with as bad a, a as the offense is going to be play. with as down He's, as they are going to be in normal game scripts. I can no longer trust Matt Forte. 
He is. He does not have the burst to get it done when a team well, is he's stacking still can, the fact, box Forte against him. Forte can still him. catch passes. Sure, but I'm saying he doesn't have the burst. He doesn't have the speed anymore, and the defenses are going to be zoned in on Matt Forte and Bilal Powell. I actually believe Bilal Powell can beat those defenders right now given the wear and tear that's not on his legs. So Bilal Powell was my one takeaway from the Jets' side of the ball where I, th I think it's okay. You know, for a long time I've been like, Bilal Powell's being overdrafted because you know he is essentially a backup running back being drafted as a starter but in in their games I think he will be the the higher producing running back and he looks to me to be an okay worth the price draft pick right now yeah may, might be worth the price what about the other side of the ball what about the the Detroit Lions uh, I, I don't really have a lot of takeaways except for uh even as one of the the main proponents pushing Kenny G and his smooth routes this is why we said chill out He's still just a late round flyer as one for one for six yards. Marvin Jones, I thought, looked good. He was targeted. Big he catch. was targeted in the end zone. And, uh, you know, I think people are going to boomerang too far on him. And I, I had also had the note of Abdullah is good. Yeah. And you know what I like He's about good. Abdullah? And, and this goes to may maybe this is just my propensity of how I see games, speaking of Spencer Ware, but both weeks with Abdullah oh. in there, they got him out. They had, I mean, so <laughs> quick, lickety split. They're like, hey, get a couple runs and get out of this game. I don't want you in here. I kept thinking, I mean, it was so early. I thought, oh, they're going to bring him back. But that first Zach Zinner run, which was early in the game, was the last Abdullah run. And that's good. That means they want him. They need him. All right, the Packers and Redskins. Takeaways from the Packers side of the ball. Jamal Williams with the start with Ty Montgomery sideline with the leg injury. Opportunity there for Jamal Williams. Yeah, I, I think it's it's still Ty Montgomery's show though. So I'm not, I'm not I'm not going to overreact to him missing this time yet. Aaron Rodgers so, is really really good. <laughs> He's really But you really good. you were really against Thomas Rawls' ankle injury because that saying his history of having bad ankle problems. Okay. Yeah, Ty Montgomery, has, yeah, Tom Tom Montgomery has a pretty good history of injuries too. So. That is true. And wasn't it an ankle? Was it an ankle last <clears throat> year? Well, it's a leg right now. I don't know what the exact issue is. All right. Uh, Samaje Pirine, eight rushes, 45 the, uh, yards. Pirine is the big note for me. Well, the big note is the first team Washington offense, like Jason saw, they looked, they looked pretty bad, very dysfunctional. They looked completely out of sync. And where is this great offensive line that every ranking says, Oh, the, the Washington Redskins have this awesome offensive line. Cause I sure as heck didn't see it on the first yeah. team against the first team. They got to get it together. Pirine bounced back in a big way. Looks like he should had a great reception it had to make an adjustment on the ball uh and then chris thompson is still the passing downs back he looked spry will he get enough work to be fantasy relevant because of passing downs back he just he never seems to get enough to actually be playable yeah one of the problems with you know the chris thompson's he'll finish the year fine for fantasy you know he he'll finish as you know the rb 36 or something but he has no ceiling you've just got to save floor in ppr leagues because he'll catch a bunch of passes but you, you don't ever get the workload and certainly not the, the red zone opportunities. But it's it's worth bringing him up. He did look better than Rob Kelly, who didn't look good at all. Well, if Rob Kelly was getting no help from that line. Like yeah, I mean, the, the whole he needs help from a line. Yeah, oh, he and certainly I, does. Look, I, when I was watching that, I, I thought to myself, if if Kirk Cousins, if if that guy playing this exact game, if, if we were watching and you told me that his name was Blake Bortles or his name was Jared Goff, Twitter would be going nuts about how off he looked, missing guys that were open, holding the ball too long. He just didn't look good, but we give him a pass because he's Kirk Cousins. He's yeah. looked good yeah, we more. Yeah. yeah, that's fine, but I'm just saying there's a no, lot of a good turnover point. on this offense. He's missing a lot of the pieces that he's used to, and it showed. So I, Yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm a little worried. All right, we got six games left, guys, so we gotta, we got we can do cruise it. some uh, takeaways here. Patriots, Texans. Big takeaways, I've already talked about Burkhead. That was my big takeaway from the Patriots side. Anything else on that side of the ball? No, my, my entire side of that ball is just Rex Burkhead yeah. plus, 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 plus. Uh, Texan side, Deshaun Watson did not have a good performance. He did rush uh, for a touchdown. Tom Savage, it, Tom Savage is going to be the starter. Yeah, he kind of secured that with a very good performance. Tom Savage needs to be – Madame Tussaud <clears throat> needs to – to make a Tom Savage because he is he is a wax statue. I mean that guy cannot. F he is Carson Palmer <laughs> is more agile in the pocket <laughs> than Tom Savage. But my takeaway from the Texas side the of the wax ball, statue. My my uh my takeaway from that side of the ball was Lamar Miller. Look, Lamar, I'm talking to you now. 
I have been a Do you need huge a diary fan. entry? Oh, yeah. yeah, give me a diary go. entry Let's here. Let's go. Lamar, I have supported you. I have a signed jersey from Pristine Auction of you in my office. I think you're talented, but I watched you give up on every play this preseason. I watched you barely chip a block and then fake like you're going out for a route. I watched you lazily run and fall down like you were paid and like you kind of don't want Tom Savage to succeed. So I'm telling you, get it together. I watched you against the Patriots where Julian Edelman was running out there, hot nine routes on a rushing play to sell it while you were being lazy. No more of this, Lamar, or I'm taking you off of one of my guys forever. Oh, man. Ooh. Sometimes you got to bring them <sighs> ultimatums. Uh, and the, the guy I want to bring up from the Texans, Bruce Ellington. Oh. What? Matt Harmon's what? Bruce Ellington looked I mean, great. He looked, he looked sensational. The stat line backed it up. And mistake number one by the 49ers this offseason. I mean, letting him go because you're worried about well, the, injury situation. You know who else let him go? The Jets. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, four for five, ninety-three. Yeah, they don't want to win. Well, look, he He's could be he real. could be injured he oh, could he, be injured he, next week, and it doesn't matter. But right I'm now, saying, looks like, good. His should he be? On the radar, or do we need another week? I don't. I don't think the offense is good enough to make him matter. Well, much. and DeAndre Hopkins missed the game. Jalen Strong was in there. Ellington was in there. So just uh, something to pay attention to. Deontay Foreman did rush seven for seventeen, but he caught two passes for sixty-six yards. He'll play a part. He'll play a part in this he's, offense. He and he's, but he's still at the bottom of the depth chart, working his way up. He is, but he. I mean, they actually have some depth to give uh, Lamar Miller those plays off that he so desperately wants. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. All right. The Los Angeles Rams, maybe the highlight of the entire week was their performance on offense or the lack of a performance by the Oakland defense. Yeah. Let me say this. Oakland, you're going to lose games. if you're de It doesn't matter what Derek Carr can do. It was nice seeing him on the field, by the way. It was nice seeing Marshawn Lynch on the field. Let me tell oh, you that. Oh, that was so These fun. These are my two yeah. dynasty running backs in our in our dynasty league here in, in the studio. I have Gurley. And I've got Lynch, and I'm feeling just fine about this year with both those guys. Gurley looked great, 8 for 38 and a touchdown. The line was getting so much push. Every time it was a short yardage down, you thought, oh, somebody's going to get stopped up. Ends up being a five-yard game. So the, the clump was moving the forward. The clump was moving. It was neat to see. Um, we've given so much grief, and Mike you know, brought it up earlier, so much grief to the offense. This actually looked like they were in a, a competent scheme. Yes. It looked like Jeff Fisher wasn't their coach. So it, weird. It looked like they got a Sammy Watkins bump, like morale. They're like, you know what? We can do this. We can be good. Because Todd Gurley had a pep in a step that he hasn't had in about he showed some 20 games. Yeah, it was nice. And we talked about Cooper Cup. Goff, 16 for 20 for 160 and a touchdown. That's a game. And that grab from Amari Cooper. Oh, Oof. in the triple coverage? Yeah, that was that was some Odell Beckham work right there. It was. It was a strange decision to throw that pass, <laughs> yeah. but Cooper came down with it. All right, DeAndre Washington worked ahead of Jalen Richard through the first two weeks of the preseason. He's the cuff to own? It, it, yeah, is, he he's, a, is he a cuff or is he a cuff? I, I do not mind at all the targeting DeAndre Washington late. And I'm not talking about if you have Marshawn Lynch. I'm saying just for your team, DeAndre Washington is a, a – a nice guy to just just take the shot on late, maybe wait a couple weeks, see how Marshawn actually responds to real NFL work. It was so fun watching Marshawn get a handoff yeah, and run it, and the crowd go crazy. And I just wanted to stand up watching pretty this good. preseason game and put my hands in the air and be like, yeah, Marshawn's playing football. That's all. You think he looked pretty good, Mike? Yeah. We, we, what did he have, like two kids? Yeah, I think he had two kids. Looked carries. pretty good to me. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, uh, if you want my my real honest assessment was on the first run, the 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 tackle that brought him down, I was a little surprised. All right, I'm going to talk about my one. Now you can call it an overreaction, whatever you want to say. The Bears, the Cardinals. Um, I think I'm going to hit this for Arizona. Uh, no, not no. for Arizona. I for Jordan Howard. I think I know. I'm I'm a little worried about Jordan Howard. Mm -hmm. because he was one of the worst pass catchers in football last year at the running back position, but they had to throw him the ball anyway. He was all they had. 
You saw Tariq Cohen for a second straight week. Mike, you talked about him last week. Oh, this, man. This Hot week. Fire. He's good. I mean, it's not like the Cardinals. I mean, he got the start, and the Cardinals' starting defense was out there, and they had problems. But Cardinals were a very good D last year, and yet Cohen rushed 11 times for 77 yards, big play after big play. And I, if he doesn't get third down and this offense struggles, he only scored six times last year. So you, now give Jordan Howard five or six scores and not as many passing yards. You're going to have dud games. That's the problem. You're going to run into dud games with Maybe. this offense. I, I mean, mean, Glennon didn't look special again. I just am concerned about Howard. Like, you have – we say this every year. Like, somebody might say you're overreacting to the backup having a good game. Howard missed the game. He had an eye injury, not a serious injury. And that's fine. If you, if you think it's an overreaction, draft Howard with confidence. I just think we know, right? In the first two rounds, you can have running backs that bust based on what you expect of them. Do I think Howard's going to disappear? Of course not. He's super talented. He's the starter. That's his job. But if I had to predict, I mean, I, th I think I said it before, if I had to predict somebody to bust out of that first couple of rounds at the running back position, his chance of busting is there. Yeah, I'm, I, I get it I, I, because it's bad offense. It's a lot of my opposition to Todd Gurley is bad offense, good running back, but bad offense, bad quarterback. But from week, uh, from game eight through the end of the season, Jordan Howard averaged – Per game, averaged over a hundred rushing yards per game. I mean, the dude—it wasn't—he wasn't padding his overall total yardage with passing yards, and he was. I mean, he had uh, in, in that time he had 15 receptions for 170 yards, which it's good and it's opportunity yeah. that he's on the field. But I think that I think Jordan Howard is really good. I believe in the Chicago offensive line and that they will when once the, the season's thing, going, the ball's going to Jordan Howard. Everybody who's in the first two rounds has the the arguments are all there for why they belong there. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. I mean, it's, so like, look, look but, at Cohen's, Cohen's success to me speaks to Jordan Howard having success as well. Well, sure, and that's fine. And I, all I'm saying is that it's not a matter of making the case for Jordan Howard to me. It's a matter of saying, look, Jeremy Hill and his yards per carry after his rookie season was through the roof. Didn't happen the second year. Todd Gurley, monstrous first year. Didn't happen the second year. There were reasons for those things. You can make every case for Jordan Howard because all the stat lines are there. That's why we're drafting yeah. him where we're drafting him. I'm just saying if I had to pick somebody, because somebody will bust, I'm picking Jordan Howard right now. We know that multiple people will bust. Yeah, Arizona Cardinals. Takeaways on the uh, Cardinals side of the ball. Uh, look, a uh, lot of questions coming in about uh, John Brown, Jerron Brown, J.J. Nelson. Who is the guy to own? How confident are you in them? I've been touting Jerron Brown. I've been sharing my lack of faith in John Brown to be able to stay healthy. As a whole, though, I need to make sure that I, you know, I'm clear. I don't expect the wide receiver two for the Arizona Cardinals to be very fantasy relevant this year. It, it strikes me they'll have their games, but to draft them in a redraft league in a home league where you're going to rely on starting them week after week. I don't know that there's going to be someone there that gets the job done. This is David Johnson's team. Larry Fitzgerald will be moving, you know, the chains through the 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 short slot slants. Whoa, <laughs> yeah, whoa! You um, just kept talking. Thanks, Doctor Seuss. You know, <laughs> if, if you're in a if you're in a best ball league where you don't have to choose the starts, I do think J.J. Nelson is a great add. Even Jerron Brown, if, or, or I'm sorry, John Brown, if he falls, where you don't have to pick the games where he's healthy. But I'm I'm worried about that entire pass catching role which tarnishes a little bit you know I've, I've I've talked about I think uh, a couple episodes ago the conundrum between Eli Manning and Palmer. Carson Palmer and I you know the 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 lack of wide receivers stepping up for Arizona leads me to have less faith in Carson Palmer does it lead either of you to have less faith in the offense to the point of David Johnson maybe no. Lev Bell is a better pick no uh, I still don't have concern for for DJ all right, let's uh, let's turn the page here. Let's go Denver, San Francisco. Takeaways from that game. Simeon seems to have secured this starting yes, job. I, I've talked about this. Paxton Lynch is not good, <laughs> and Trevor Simeon is at least a capable quarterback. He will be able to to move the offense. I mean, if if they need him to go out there and Alex Smith it, fine, because they they can do it. I, I'm not concerned. Of Demarius Thomas is still fine. Sanders is fine. And 
look, my my uh, belief in C.J. Anderson, and I know, Jason, you're right in stars D'Angelo Henderson. I think he's still going to be the clear backup. But C.J. Anderson C.J. Anderson's going to be the guy. And I, I won't argue his injury history, but he is a starting running back for a team that wants to run the ball. And that I, has to run the ball. And I think he's a, a solid running back. So I, I'm still very, very comfortable targeting Anderson as your uh, as an RB2. Carlos Hyde worked as the main back at the first eight carries. We know this by now. Carlos Hyde will be the starter in San Francisco. Did not look good, but then again, most of the time people don't look great against Denver. Um, the one takeaway from the Niner side of the ball for me was Vance McDonald. He didn't have a great game, but he was targeted yes, quite he a was. bit. He, you know, it was clear that Hoyer was looking his way, and it seemed like from what was coming out of camp the last week or two, I think that's a theme that they've been seeing in camp, and it showed up on the field. So Vance McDonald is a, a he's he's a guy that I'm targeting in best ball leagues where you you want multiple tight ends. Well, in redraft though, are you in redraft? There's just enough. There's too many guys that I free? like better. Okay, like there's there's too many free guys I like better. But I do believe Vance McDonald could could very well be worth it. I just won't put my chips on him yet. But I'll be watching him week one, and he'll certainly play a few games as a streaming candidate for for me this year falcons and steelers saw some hooper targets looked pretty good um you didn't see freeman still in the concussion protocol any takeaways on the falcons side or do you want to talk steelers i don't really have anything huge from the, the falcons um fitzgerald Toussaint started for pittsburgh James Conner got a lot of work. Twenty yeah. carries, ninety-eight yards. I think that's the biggest Some up and down story for Conner. Yeah, of, of this game is Jason. You've been kind of the big supporter of of James Conner. How did you feel about it, his performances? The end numbers are yeah. The solid. end numbers look a lot better than how he performed. He performed <laughs> well against much inferior competition later in the game. Uh, had some mistakes had some drops I I do like him from college and I like the role behind Le'Veon Bell but I need to see him take over ahead of Fitzgerald Toussaint and if he's not able to do that then he's irrelevant because right now if Lev Bell were to go down I believe Fitzgerald Toussaint would be the guy so that that leaves Connor yeah that that doesn't help and it's also good yeah. to see Martavis Martavis on the field there. yeah doing work Doing work. Yeah, I didn't have a lot of takeaways from this game because you, you didn't have Big Ben yeah, it's, playing right. on one side. And then the other side, you, you kind of know what you have in these veteran teams that have most of the same pieces back from last year. They're good. All I right. will say this. <laughs> uh, looking into schedules, the Steelers' opening schedule looks great as a, Browns as week a defense. One? Browns week one, but I think their first – like four weeks, they've got uh, Baltimore and Jacksonville and the Browns and another one that wasn't scary. So a really good, you know, defense that most people might not even be drafting. All right, last matchup here: the Saints and the Chargers. This game got started by an Alvin Kamara, sixty-one or sorry, a fifty-yard 50. touchdown, five carries for sixty-one yards and a touchdown. He also had a a good uh, reception in this game, twenty-yard reception. He's he's just looked. He's like an a, excellent running back. Yeah, I mean, he just looks like a good player. Also, we do have an. I want to bring this update to the fantasy football community because they talked about this in the broadcast straight from the source. This is from Alvin Kamara, who says his mom pronounced it Kamara, but he has chosen to pronounce it Kamara. I don't understand why you would change the pronunciation of your last name, but that's that's where we're at. That's I didn't know you story. could do that. You, it, there are no rules. All right. Well, then call me Jason Moore. I'm going as Mike. This is the double O. Mike Riggett. Mike Riggett. <laughs> uh, but it, it's but, funny. But it you is look Camara. at Camara. Yes. If it, you it, look at the Patriots and the Saints, you see some commonalities with the just the depth they have at the running back position, how much they lean on them. It makes me. I mean, I'm sure the Saints want to use him. Yeah. Right? Oh, I he, mean, the Saints want to his, use him in the offense. He's playing his way in the, to the. You have to give. This guy snaps. He's he is absolutely I really li- dynamic. I really liked him early in the draft process. You know, so, some analysts didn't get it with Kamara, and I was always one of those guys saying, "I I get it. I look, and every time he touches the ball, I don't think he's going to be a workhorse, but especially in this role as a pass catching back for a team that utilizes the running back so much, he'll he'll be fantasy relevant this year, and he's being drafted really late. All right. Any other takeaways here on the Chargers side of the ball? I mean, you didn't have Philip Rivers in there. Um, 
you couldn't see a whole lot from, you know, targets went all over the field uh, to the receivers. So I think we'll wrap that up. We'll be into uh, a big episode tomorrow, the My Guys episode. My Guys. Uh, we're all picking out some guys to plant our flag and watch this season. See if these guys can deliver like we expect them to. It's a great episode. You do not want to miss it. Again, a quick reminder at the end of this show, check us out on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit. If your draft is coming up, you got to equip yourself. You got to set that foundation. Got to build that beautiful fantasy house tall with the foundation of the Ultimate Draft Kit. And uh, if you want to play some best ball, Mike will be doing another live draft this week. You can do that at playdraft.com slash ballers. Grab a free entry. Week, week one is up and week for those head-to-heads head head now yeah. for uh, draft. And <coughs> less, we cannot forget that in about two weeks here, Ballers Live, ballerslive.com. We are doing a live podcast in Phoenix, Arizona. If you're in the region, come on down. It's going to be fantastic. And it keeps getting better because everyone who goes, if you got a ticket, uh, you're, you're eligible for a signed David Johnson, a framed signed oh, it's not. David, got a ticket. David Johnson jersey, courtesy of Pristine and if Auction. You're, and if you're not in the Southwest and you're like, man, I want to see the Ballers Live, even before then, the fantasy sports show.com. We are going to be uh, teaching the some Northeast. We're, we just, we hit yeah. the corners. That's yes. what we do. So That's right. if you're near Toronto uh, in the weekend of August 25th ish, I think uh, we'll be, <laughs> we'll be in Toronto <laughs> this, at some point. The if fantasy sports show.com. You can find tickets. It's there also known as this weekend. My goodness. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Incredible. That is, that is what it's known as. All right. Thanks for tuning oh. in. We appreciate it. Yeah, and, and those best balls, if you want to get your account ready, playdraft.com slash ballers. Get a free best ball entry. And we'll, we'll, what? Go football! You kind of look like a wildling, Mike. Rawr. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.